Hello everyone, welcome to MU Debug. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can run Far Cry 4 on your smartphone with the Snapdragon 8 Elite or Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5. This will be specific to those two chips as they use a different GPU architecture from the older Snapdragon chips and therefore the instructions that I'm going to give you for this are going to be different from those. In fact, you will have less issues if you follow a different tutorial for using turnip drivers on those older Snapdragon chips, if you have an older Snapdragon chip that is, than you'll have here. However, if you're running the Snapdragon 8 Elite or the 8 Elite Gen 5 that just released, then you're going to want to follow this one instead. I personally am running the game on the ARM version of Proton, so if I go into my settings here, you can see that I'm using Proton 9.0 ARM64. I'm using the Rapper V2 graphics driver and then I'm also using, if we go on here, the 8 Elite 2-842.6 custom drivers, which are from the Game Hub app. As I have in previous videos, I will link the download to that in the description. So you just need to click on that, download it. It will be a zip file. And then what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna go into this little menu here on the side, and you're gonna go into Adreno Tools GPU drivers. You're gonna click Install Drivers, and it's going to take you to your downloads and mine's full of all of these lovely things here these are all just random drivers that i found online but the one that you should be interested in uh, will just be in your normal downloads folder is the 8elite2-842.6 zip on that website there may be the .8 zip i haven't checked in a little while but you basically just tap on it and it's going to appear in there then you can go back to your container and within wrapper v2 and the little cog on the side, you can select it there. That is what's gonna make all of this work a million times better. So it's no turnip driver. The turnip drivers are much, much better, but this will make a massive difference in actually running anything at all on the A Elite and the A Elite Gen 5. <laughs> then you're gonna select DXVK as the DX wrapper, and I'm running the 2.6.2-1-1 GPL async one. I've got async enabled and async cache enabled. So what that's going to do is that's going to allow your CPU to cache shaders on the go while you're playing rather than having the game freeze every time you want or every time it wants to cache a shader which is really horrible if you don't have that enabled. So definitely enable that or you'll have massive stuttering issues. I would personally enable an FPS lock of 30 because as I've mentioned also in previous videos if you don't have a cooler on your phone it will start to thermal throttle pretty bad and the performance will be all over the place so it's just better to just cap it at 30 FPS and have a consistent frame rate rather than it sort of bouncing around all over the place but for the purposes of this video I'm not going to do that just so you can see the performance. You can ignore Wine D3D, you can ignore the rest so I've got also reflector enabled. Obviously when we're on the ARM version of Proton, FX Core will be the translator for the CPU so that's fine. All of these are default however I've got GTX 1060 as the GPU name. And that's just a spoof GPU. <laughs> if that looks weird to you, that's all that is. It's just so that the game itself has something to reference as your GPU, because it's obviously not gonna understand what the Adreno GPU is inside of a smartphone because the game was never intended to be run on a smartphone. The only thing I will give split advice on here is if you have a phone that has eight gigs of VRAM, I would personally only recommend setting the video memory size to 2048 megabytes. That's because you're just gonna run out of RAM if you try and use four gigs of RAM for the VRAM. And it's not really necessary, especially for this. You can easily run Far Cry 4 on a two gig GPU, but I just leave it on four because my phone has 12 gigs of RAM. And if you've got even more than that, then you can just go nuts and just set it to the max one that's on there, which is four. So that's that, and then I'm just gonna scroll up a little bit, and then you're gonna go to advanced. And then under advanced, you can ignore those because as I said, it's using FexCore. You're going to want to use FexCore 2508, and I've got fast, fast, and enabled. Now for this bit, a weird thing about this version of WinLater, which is WinLater CMOD 13.1.1, which will also be in the description, is that when you first make 
the container, the only ones that will show up will be 2507 on this menu, and I don't really know why. However, the second you make a container and actually open it and then come out and go back into the settings, that, that will appear. So if that happens to you, just open the container and then come back out to the settings and that 2508 should be there. Not sure why that happened, but that's how I make it appear on mine. So that's pretty much all of the settings. Resolution wise, I've set it to a custom of sort of a lower percentage version of my phone's resolution. I obviously can't really give much advice on this because every phone's going to have a different resolution or most phones are going to have a different resolution. If you find your phone's resolution online, you can just type in resolution scale calculator, type in the phone's full resolution, and then just set it to like 50%, and it will give you a resolution that you can put into here that will fit your phone screen, but won't be like an absurdly high resolution. So, you know, you don't end up with horrible performance issues. So now you can just jump straight in. So another thing that I like to use, the container that I make, is the Visual C Redistributables Pack. So this is great. A lot of games will need these, and it's a pain in the ass trying to figure out which one to use. So all you really need to do is just download this from the description, and you can just click install all.bat and it will just go through and it will install every single version of them and you don't need to do anything. You can just put your phone down for a minute or two and it will just go through. Mine's gonna do it quickly because they're already installed so it's not actually doing anything, but super useful tool. This has been the difference between me having a game run and not running in a time where I was just not able to figure out what exactly was going wrong. I just couldn't figure it out and you know you get tricked into thinking that you've fixed all these and as you can see there's so many of them that you could easily miss one and that's obviously what's happened to me before. So we're going to go into Far Cry 4. So now I'm in the install folder and you're just going to want to click Far Cry 4 to launch it however you can click create shortcut and then if you back out of the thing here and then go into shortcuts on WinLayer, you can actually click the three dots and you can add it to your home screen. Although I would recommend just fixing the name. So now it says Far Cry 4 Space and you can press that and it will literally just add an icon to your home screen and launch it straight from there. That's fantastic, love that. I also imagine it probably saves a little bit of resources because it's not actually running the whole container it just runs that application and then doesn't have any of the other windows so that's always nice and here we are in far cry 4 on our phones this is crazy it never gets old the fps is lower by about 15 um while recording it's usually hovering around 50 but i'm trying to record in higher quality and unfortunately that comes at the cost of the resources on the chip and that makes it run worse. However, even while recording uh, in 4K over the top of this game running emulated PC code on my phone, it's still getting 30 FPS on average. I'll just go in and show you the settings that I'm running. Uh, I've got the graphics quality on custom. It is a mix, so I've got very high textures because, again, we've got the VRAM for it. Shadows on low because shadows are just not worth the performance penalty, in my opinion. Post effects on ultra, most things on low. Uh, you can really run this at like high, no problem, over 30 FPS. However, for some reason, if you turn terrain up to more than medium, it completely destroys the FPS and none of the other settings seem to do that. So if you're getting bad FPS at high settings, just turn terrain to low or medium and you won't have that problem. Anyway, I'm just gonna quit yapping now and I'm just gonna do a bit of gameplay. Um, enjoy. Give him some morphine and turn off that fucking radio. What happened to him? He fell. Pagan floods the airways and we have to enjoy his bullshit. Enough is enough! I told him to climb up the old bell tower, take over the transmitters, hijack the broadcast locally. Except... I can do it. Way to step up, brother. There's nobody guarding it, but it's a tricky gland. Promise me you won't fall. I promise.